Hello, testing, testing. Well, here we are uh, in the park uh, near my house. Uh, there's no one here a second ago, there's only two people walking by. But this is where I work in every day on my isolation together um, projects uh, because it's a lovely space and I'm examining it in detail. Over the years I've come here, but not in this detail, every day there's always something to find different shadows, different shapes, different things that um, involved me. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, quickly, Tony Fisher. Uh, I'm nearly 66 years old. I was born in this village and I still live in this village, though I did live in Nottingham for quite a long while, but my me, uh, me wife died and so on and so forth. Uh, but I started going to school locally, uh, went to Derby Art College, did painting, uh, sculpture and film and then did a three-year degree course in photography at Trent Polytechnic and Derby Art College and that's been a major influence all my life because it's a wonderful course not just technical but philosophy wise um, and so the, the journey began it's not been a smooth journey but a journey nevertheless uh, that's taken me on many adventures um, I got involved with filmmaking and was part of the Arts Council for Makers on Tour Scheme uh, so, um, you know, it, it's one of those things that um, I, I'm not going to try to do my entire life in 20 minutes. But, um, so independent film has been a very big influence on me, particularly avant-garde film from America and English filmmakers from the 60s and 70s. And I just soak up art. I, I love paint, I love going to art galleries and different abstract paintings and different artists like... Yeah, the old school, you know, Miro and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's probably loads and loads of influences and everyone has them all the time, you know, but lots of photographers from the past, um, particularly like, you know, Lee Miller and, and Man Ray and stuff, that kind of stuff. But I, I uh, in the first exhibition to a documentary, I did an exhibition called Cheese Snaps, uh, a social history of Stilton Cheese, which went round uh, different galleries and museums. And I did... Um, a big documentary project on D.H. Lawrence and Eastwood and I worked in black and white for years and then I discovered colour so I work in both now and um, recent, um, recently, last year, I've started a three-year project on isolation and well-being and loneliness with Arts Council England and I did a small taste of one at Art Core Gallery and currently I have an exhibition on at Derby Hospitals which is very difficult to get in to see till October which is going to lead to a much bigger exhibition there in November. And I'm working um, at Wakefield, the Art House, and uh, City Arts in Nottingham and Broadway in Nottingham. And I'm going all over the country photographing people. But obviously, at the moment, I can't. So I'm now doing um, self-work on, on self-isolation where I live. And um, I also write poetry and stuff like that. So... I'm trying to get this all together and it's keeping me motivated and that's the hardest thing isn't it when you actually lock down to actually be motivated and do things so I welcome any kind of uh, questions I, I'm, I've not really uh, used this uh, technology before outside but uh, you can see so I'm going to show you some of the scenery here just to see where I'm talking about So that's that's the kind of park. It's about half a mile <coughs> square. With a, um, I'm just doing around the anywhere I can walk from my house, and I can't walk very fast because I've got a disability. But that doesn't stop me. Um, there's so many wonderful things in it. Makes you look closely at things, and also it's different light, different times of day, and um, pick up on on whatever I can each day. In fact, some things I'm trying to find different representations what I think COVID-19 looks like and I've seen some kind of evil looking shapes in trees and stuff like that. So it's my imagination, I suppose, but that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I'll, I'll say hello to a few people, but I don't, I'm not quite sure how you... Uh, I think you have to type it on the screen, <laughs> you know. So uh, I'm hoping somebody's watching this. Uh, 
So, I'm trying to think what to say now. Um, yes, I've probably covered a lot of ground and missed loads of things out already. But basically, I like to put things um, on a wall because everything's online and we're doing it online, but I love doing big prints and putting them on a wall, you know, uh, in different situations because then you can, you know, it's a different experience from just looking at something on a screen. So this material I'm gathering now, hopefully I'll be able to put on a wall uh, later in the year, whether this lockdown finishes. And um, I invite people along to come and see it, you know. Um, but it's wonderful to see what everybody's doing also. And uh, some people um, thought that, well, my, doing an isolation project was an odd thing to do when I started it six months ago. But boy, you know, we're all in that situation now. Um, and of course, the reason I started doing it is because a lot of my work over the last probably 15 years or 20 years has been to do with isolation because um, I lost my mother and father and, and my wife all at the same time and, and so on and so forth. And so I developed kind of mental health issues and things. But then I've used that now with art is actually encouraged me to do things and I've, I've collaborated with other artists uh, particularly with someone called Aidan Schindler who's a fantastic guy who invented the Stardust project in Worksworth if you know what I mean and we did, did a project together and that's on display at Derbyshire County Council permanently called Lifelines. Um, I love doing collaboration with other artists, um, writers, whatever um, so maybe I'll do that in the future I'll, I'll work with some other artists doing other projects, so... Uh, what's the most favourite photo I've ever taken? Well, it's one which I call Red on Red, and it was um, one of a pier, an abandoned pier in Western Supermere a couple of years ago, and it's got um, someone had tied a rose next to a fence, and there's all kinds of things. I'm sure you can see the image on the site. But that was chosen by... Uh, UFMIA, forget how you pronounce it, to represent England in the Mental Health Art Exhibition in Brussels two years ago, which are, and people fundraised for that, including the Unite Union, and all different people put money up. And I went to uh, had a fantastic time in Brussels with other artists um, with that piece of work, and, and uh, that's been a very popular thing to do. That particular one. I've also worked at the Institute of Mental Health University in. Uh, in uh, <coughs> Nottingham with City Arts and I've had some work on there quite a few times. Um, my favourite gallery, uh, well, I love the local galleries, you know, obviously I, I do. So, um, but I, I've often gone down to London to go down to the Tate and stuff like that and uh, the Photographer's Gallery and stuff like that, but um, locally I love all the galleries. I'm very diplomatic, you know, about that. Uh, and this Isolation Together project is fantastic because it's bringing all these people together showing different viewpoints on, on the same kind of area. So we've all got a point in time where this is happening. So it's not just random, we're all happening in this real time and space. So it's kind of also an historical document as well of the time and the place, not, not just something random, if that makes sense. So, you know, it's really great that there's initiatives from ArtCore and hopefully other organisations too. Uh, I, I was very pleased to, a lot of things have been put on hold because one thing I really want to emphasise, really want to emphasise, is that over the last few years, not only have I had encouragement, but real direct help and assistance from many organisations. I'd just like to mention a few. So, obviously there's ArtCore, but there's City Arts in Nottingham, there's Art House in Wakefield, there's Anxiety UK in Manchester, been really good. Uh, Rethink Mental Illness, and oh God, you know, there's Shape in London. There's so many organisations that have been really supportive and, and helping me on my journey, and of course Quad as well. So, in fact, I don't want to say too many because I might leave some out, which wouldn't be very good, would it? But uh, if, if you look at any links I'm going to leave, you can have a look at the different things I'm talking about. <coughs> Uh, and I thought it was nice to come out in the space I'm working rather than just seeing my grotty bedroom full of old CDs, you know, because <laughs> um, 
I've got a huge, though I live in a small space, I've got a huge collection of art books, photography books, important to me. Um, I also have been fortunate to work as a music photographer and I've worked a lot with, um, <clears throat> particularly with a group called Fairport Convention and Richard Thompson and people like that, um, photographing, so I just love music, it's so inspirational to me um, and that's really kept me going. I suppose the only regret I've got is that, in a way, it sounds Luddite, that, you know, digital technology was invented because he used to love the old analogue dark rooms, but that's not to be now. But there's always something new to find out. I'm just going to rest next to this tree. Ugga tree week, folks, you know. Uh, yes, I've got, uh, someone's asked me if I've got a Facebook page or anything online. Uh, yeah, I'm sure on this video uh, it'll go onto the page. There'll be some uh, information there. If you look up Lonely Photony 54 on Facebook page, that, that's got all the links. Or Anthony Fisher Photography has got all the links. Um, but I, these will be written down. So I'd love to get in a dialogue with anyone who wants to talk to me offline, you know. Oh, the origin of the project. Well, this came out of... Um, you know, work I was doing on the previous project for the Arts Council two, two or three years ago, which was all uh, abstract photographs of windows and doorways and portals. And uh, it was about literally about reflections and about what's going on hidden away behind windows and things like that. And uh, because some of my photography has been quite reflective, literally, that's the pun, but I wanted to um, develop that into a project about about loneliness generally because a lot of music you know you know obviously Roy Orbison but there's lots of different music that's got a connotation of loneliness and since I've always worked on my own using a bedroom and I've got you know like years of isolation with no one to speak to I thought this is a really good topic to explore and to find out also uh, about solitude and about people who actually thrive with a certain amount of loneliness and prosper, if you know what I mean, in the spiritual sense. So I wanted to explore the topic and uh, so it was realised last April that um, I got the funding to do this project and uh, it will continue, it's ongoing all the time and uh, it's also, you know, actually helped me not be lonely. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, that's the only one it's really quite tricky walking around talking, but I'm hoping <laughs> making, I'm making some kind of sense. So uh, I don't even know how long I've got left now. Um, anybody else like to ask me a question? Um, oh, also, yeah, I, said I used to make films, and I, I made I made films about. Uh, Loneliness, uh, abstract films. I made a film called Overflow Solutions and Life Cycles, which is about a, a bicycle that was abandoned. So there's always been that thread in my work. I don't know why. And I, I won a fiction prize for a short story called Postcard from Matlock, uh, uh, set in Victorian times. And a guy who found a postcard in London and, and it was, he was looking for his son who had disappeared. It's all kind of weird because that's exactly what's happened in my life. My son disappeared 10 years ago and uh, it's kind of weird some of these precedents are already there in my life and I don't know why. Uh, I've always had that kind of thread going through my life and some of it's quite painful but uh, rather than coming about it in a miserable way I want to try and explore it and if this makes any sense. So. Uh, you know, I don't want to overanalyze myself or anybody else. I just want to create, really. And uh, something, don't be frightened of making mistakes. You know, not every picture's of great or whatever, but it doesn't matter. You're exploring, you're trying things out. So never be put off. Never let anyone ever put you down. Just keep going and, and create. <sighs> I'm getting pretty hot. I don't know why I put this scarf on, only because I kind of like the colour of it, I think. And I can cover it over my mouth. If someone says anything. <laughs> Uh, well, my new body of work, I suppose it's, 
it's still carrying on with this but I'm just and it's spanning in different directions one thing I want to do I want to collaborate with some musicians because I'm also recording sound I'm recording interviews with people also sounds any kind of sound that associates with loneliness and I found a really good group that was uh, uh, mentioned on radio um, called the loneliness project for musicians and, I, and I'm I'm making connections with musicians to actually do a sound piece um, like a kind of mini opera to go with some images that are going to be on a wall but and a kind of oral experience so you can um, immerse in all these different sounds and, and music that will go with the images that, that's one of the ideas so uh, this will continue for quite some time um, that is my mission if you like um, but I want to try and take it in different directions. So each exhibition at different places will be different from, you know, the one that came before or the one or one that's, you know, if you, if you, know, what you know what I mean. I'm wandering into some kind of coppice now and I'm not, I'm not been down here before, so if I fall down some hole, then... Uh, oh, I'm in some grass cuttings now. Um, Yeah, well, I wouldn't say I'm using my scarf to actually protect myself. I think, uh, uh, well, I'm lucky that I live in the countryside because it's not it's not very dense population, so I keep away from people quite a long distance normally. So um, uh, I can't think of anything else to say at the moment because I think I'm rambling a bit. <laughs> if um. I'll just have a drink of water. I've also got a uh, a good team of people working with me. Um, uh, I perhaps should mention the names or, or not, but the, 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 at least three, three or four people are regularly helping me. I've got a project manager, Chris and Stella and Peter, and I've got a team of people who are helping me all the time and bouncing ideas off and my daughter as well so uh, I'm just fortunate to have all this help really I think that's all I'm going to say now because I can't really think of anything else to say because I feel starting to feel a bit self-conscious about this but uh, so uh, we'll just have one last little look round where I am and then I shall bid you all farewell but do keep in touch oops nearly fell over some brambles there Fade music, fade credits, credits and over and bye for now.